Now on to vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D has been getting a lot of press lately, mostly in the realm of prevention. Can you elaborate more about this mysterious vitamin and how you use it in your practice? Yeah, when, when you've been looking at this new research that's been manifesting in the news where, say, you can get up to a 50% reduction in, uh, in cancerous with, uh, with vitamin D, you're realizing there's a lot more to this vitamin than just probably a simple vitamin. What a lot of people don't, don't realize about it is that it's actually a steroid hormone. And so the steroid hormone, meaning so similar to say testosterone in men and estrogen in women, it has these type of uh, hormonal type of properties as well. And that's why it's got a connection, say, with osteoporosis and, and bone health. But uh, when I was going to school, we were just hearing about vitamin D being the simple sunshine vitamin. And if it's too low, you can get certain diseases. And if you go out and just a little bit in the sun, you can make a certain value and you don't really need to worry about vitamin D. Well, now what we're realizing is that we were wrong and that vitamin D um, has uh, a, a, a great deal of, of positive benefits in overall health and also in the field of cancer care. And um, so that's why, for example, you're seeing the, the Canadian Cancer Society um, increasing their general recommendations for the general public of vitamin D from before it used to be, say, 400 international units, and now it's up to 1,000 international units and even up to 2,000 international units depending on uh, your ancestry. So if you're, say, more tanned, you need more sun exposure because they're protected from the sun. And uh, so 12 minutes is a standard, but maybe someone who's darker skin may need uh, a lot more. But the, the reality is, is that in my practice, um, I, I do a lot of um, uh, testing of blood levels with vitamin D. And I, also, and I do that with, in, in particular with my patient with cancer. And one of the reasons for that is, is while vitamin D has a lot of press to prevent cancers and other types, it can actually have a, a positive benefit in patients with cancer. For example, it's been researched that say patients with lung cancer have higher levels of vitamin D and their blood can do better clinically. There's research showing higher levels of vitamin D if you have certain aggressive types of cancers that may calm them down. And, and this is where I, I, I help to optimize individual cases. So you want to make sure that cancer, uh, patients with cancer have enough vitamin D in their systems. That, that's correct, because there's this assumption that even though if you, if you supplement them with, say, 1,000 international units, 2,000 international units, that may be enough for them. And, and, I'll, sh and I'll send you some, some cases that, that I've seen. I have, for example, some patients who are snowbirds, and what that means is that they're never in the winter. They're always getting sun. So they say fly down to Arizona, they're getting lots of sun exposure there, they come back here, and they're nice and tanned, and, uh, and when we do levels of vitamin D, they're still considered more deficient by, 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 by laboratory standards. And these are patients who have lung cancer, say, or have a certain type of cancer. And so for me, it kind of makes me wonder going, well, well, what's going on here? Um, and, uh, and I've seen this type of pattern as well. Like so I've seen, for example, uh, uh, patients with advanced breast cancer where it was advanced enough stage four where, say, in their bones, in their liver, in their lungs. And, and when I measured their vitamin D levels, they're very, very deficient. And so I'm realizing then that the standard 2000 international uh, unit recommendation is not enough for this population group. And so in those cases, it's about trying to optimize their levels and increase their levels and, and, uh, and trying to have a therapeutic advantage for their type of cancer. And, and I'll give you a, another example again. So in, the, in the, a patient I had with breast cancer with stage 4, when I measured their levels, it was very deficient, one of the most lowest levels I've ever seen. And, and then uh, because it was a case where they were... The cancer is really sticking a strong hold on them, and I honestly thought they were going to leave this world. I needed to be more aggressive with their case and trying to help them. So I began recommending 10,000 international units of vitamin D. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. And I also started giving them injections of vitamin D. I was giving them 100,000 international units every week times six weeks. So they're getting 600,000 international units cumulatively by injection. And afterwards, I started measuring their levels of vitamin D in their blood. And after, say, eight to ten weeks later, and I found out that their vitamin D levels went up a few points, maybe about 15 points, but it was still considered more deficient side. But yet, though, when you looked at how these patients were doing, 
clinically, yeah, their tumor counts were going down. Uh, they didn't need transfusions anymore. Their, uh, their liver functions were improving. And so you're seeing that, and their overall, their overall body chemistry and body state was doing better. So you, you can actually see then that um, the, using higher doses, and in particular with patients with cancer, have a clinical benefit. And that's what I, I try to do in my cases. I try to make sure that, you know, uh, I say, for example, they're doing 2,000 international units, and if they're out of a certain blood range, I say, that's good enough. Keep doing whatever you're doing. And in other cases, you know, maybe we need to be a bit more aggressive. Or maybe in other cases, maybe step down the dose. And I think in cancer care, that's important to do. So, uh, I hear there are different types of vitamin D. There's even a prescription form of vitamin D. Um, what is, really, what is the difference between these forms and which form do you use in your practice? Mm -hmm. the, the, um, the, the, the prescriptive forms of vitamin D are the, the, the more activated forms. They're the, the most strongest types of vitamin D that are available. And, uh, and they're the ones that are, say, been talked about in certain treatment cases um, with uh, various types of cancers and some research and versus the ones that um, you find in a health food store they're more of the uh, inactive forms of vitamin D and so your body's got to metabolically convert and activate them say in your liver and your tissues to make them more active and in my experience um, I feel that the, the, the more natural forms of vitamin D that your body's got to activate is a safer form and is a less stressful form to use on the body. I feel that the prescription forms, you do have to be more cautious with them and I think um, uh, using them could be too hard for the body and I feel it could be too much of a strain on the body over time and, and I question its, its therapeutic effects in cancer patients. Because in essence, remember, vitamin D is a steroid hormone. So you're having this super strong <laughs> form of vitamin D that's always there all the time. And while you're trying to target the cancer, I understand, I think it's, it can have some unfortunate consequences. And so the preferential forms that I'd like to use are the more common one forms that are found in, in health food stores. And it's my hope that more research is done with using those um, in, 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 in cancer care.